when I went off to uh, Kutztown University in Kutztown, PA, uh, I started getting into this idea that I was going to be a potter. And I just thought that was something that I wanted to do and that was going to be my career. And I understood that maybe I wasn't going to get rich, but somehow it was always about the clay, you know. From the very beginning, uh, it's amazed me how I can take this, this mound of clay and I can smell it and I can tell it right from the earth and yet I can make this out of this mound of clay. That's always amazed me. Almost for 30 years now, that's amazed me. So I went off to the military, and over the next 25 years while I served in the Marine Corps and the Army, I developed um, a style uh, working with clay. I, um, they had uh, the wheel, they had the kiln, they had everything I could possibly need, and it was just my ability to, to interpret what I would see around me and what I believed was good potting, um, good turning, like they call it in the South. I actually believe that I'm still very much traditionalist because I only like to throw and throw perfect, symmetrical sometimes, maybe a little asymmetrical once in a while, but what you see in front of you is the accumulation of a lot of technical skill over and over and over again to form a vessel, the, the belly, the shoulder, the neck, the same things that we have interpretive and figurative painting, um, which kind of got off on my, uh, my work in painting, and I started thinking, why not develop it right onto the pot? Influenced by uh, folks like Peter Volkos, uh, Warren McKenzie, uh, let's see, there was Bernard Leach, he had worked at St. Ives, Michael Cardew, those kind of folks that came out of the 30s and 40s during the American craft movement. And I just felt that there was a real connection to the, to the spirit of clay, to throwing on the wheel. You know, me and the wheel and these things, telling my brain what to do, when to do it. That's all it was about. 